Ladies and gentlemen. You'll never see the likes of me, baby. So I'd taken off my makeup, brushed my teeth, unscrewed the light bulb, got in bed, and I'm watching Letterman, and I hear, squeak, 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 squeak. Light turns on. So I'm under the covers, and I'm like, oh my god. So I'm like, like, okay, you're gonna go in there, you're gonna turn off the fucking light. <laughs> so I like, get it up, and I do that run towards the bathroom that you, like if you were running over hot coals, it's like the scared run, you're like, <laughs> run, jump up on the toilet, reach up, unscrew the light bulb, jump down, run back, get under the covers. I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, hey idiot, why didn't you just take the light bulb and throw it in the garbage? <laughs> well. I couldn't even imagine hearing that light bulb float out of my garbage can, <laughs> rise up, and screw itself back in. And I reached my pocket for my iPhone, and it's dead, like they always are. And then it slowly dawns on me, oh, fuck. I am locked in Tompkins Square Park. And then I think, you know, Greg, it, it's... It's not that cold out here. I mean, they have to open the park at some time in the morning, right? So maybe I could just like sit on a bench and wait it out. And then I think, um, no, that's like homeless crazy talk. I mean, I think sometimes that's how it starts for some people. <laughs> You're just outside and you think, I could deal with this. It's not that bad, I don't need a place. Um, <laughs> but then I think, no, 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 I have to get out of here. I have to get out of here. So I walk over to the Avenue B gate and I reach, I reach through and I, I shout out to people, uh, uh, excuse me, excuse me. And they say, no, no, not interested, not interested. <laughs> The ocean makes little girls scream. They still choose to go in, though. And when the sand-stirred water swirls around their velveteen legs, they shriek from the cold. They vocalize their excitement in high-pitched octaves that could make even squawking seagulls take to the air and move like a cloud further down the beach away from the little girls. Scientists have actually found that the fluid in the human body is almost identical to the content of ocean water. And I am thinking that maybe these little girls scream from the joy of their cells recognizing home. I enter the cold water myself, knee deep, my teeth clenched. I envy these little girls next to me with their primal sounds, one begetting another. And, and I try to join in, but all I can manage to get out is like, ooh, ah, gee, ah, oh, 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 oh. Because my mind has already dashed the initial impulse. And if I let loose for real, <laughs> pouring out, the scream would spill like a oil spill, mile after mile, turning the water dark. The mothers would leave their beach chairs, tossing their magazines onto the sand to grab their daughters from the sea. They would wipe the stain of my experience from their unfinished limbs with Disney princess towels. See these little girls, they're, they're 2,000 pounds lighter than I am, and they can sprint through their regrets three times faster than I can admit to having any. Okay, now I know, it's weird, that some guy with a thing for full-figured fellas in designer underwear treats me like his personal porn star, but you wanna know something? It's probably one of the most honest relationships I've had since moving to Los Angeles. <laughs> All the liars and losers and cheaters and addicts and guys who can't commit and guys who want to commit right away. <laughs> it's refreshing. Do you know, do you know how hard it is to find a good honest man who will look you in the eye and say I love you? Oh, yes. <laughs> See me after the show. There's a support group that meets here on Wednesday nights. So I buy the dress. And 
I go out into Manhattan in the broad daylight of Manhattan, yellow canary strapless party dress, sneakers, and a backpack. <laughs> Let me tell you something, I am turning some hairs. <laughs> yes, but this dress is kind of, it feels like it has a life of its own. It, it feels like it's this window into a new life for myself. You know, I could see myself accepting an Oscar in this dress. I could turn gold digger in this dress. Billionaires over 65 only need apply. I even see Anderson Cooper getting out of a car and he mouths some words which I think are, who's that bitch? I mean, the Euro trash tourists go crazy. It's like, search, fantastic, ciao, ciao. And I am on cloud nine walking all the way home to my fifth floor walk-up. I get there, and I open my closet, and I'm going to introduce my dress to the rest of my clothes. And I try to take the dress off, but I can't. It's like the red shoes. I can't take it off. And it just says, no, chica. Don't put me in there with those bargain basement bitches. So like many a loser with a few years of sobriety before me, I became an addictions counselor and sober companion, which is where I learned to correct people's behavior like that. I went back to school to community college in a trailer in the West Valley, and I got some letters after my name. I've also been a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one companion for really rich people and celebrities at another treatment center that was located in Liz Taylor's old house in Beverly Hills. That place closed down, which sucks, because I loved being there alone in the middle of the night, kind of waiting on the drunken spirit of Liz Taylor in the Mrs. Michael Todd days to stumble into the living room in her nighty holding a scotch on the rocks in her hands. Sometimes I'd be in the living room after my client had taken her sleep meds and I'd be binge watching a Netflix show and a raccoon would come to the pool through the water to wash her food and I'd be like, Liz? 